our pastor, faithful to preach the word, Pastor Steele. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You can have your seat tonight. Isn't God good to us? Amen. So good. So good. Amen. God is doing good things. Hallelujah. I believe God. Thank you, Lord. I uh, want to take some time tonight and minister on this that's in my spirit. Just very simply, the plan of God. The plan of God. And, uh, you know, God has, obviously, it, it can be very cliché to say God has a plan for everybody's life. Well, He does. And uh, the issue is understanding that. And understanding that if I'm in the plan, then the provision is in the plan. My, my job is being the plan. And now, there's different ways that, that over the years we've talked about that in the church, the will of God, that I'm doing what God wants me to do. But it's the plan. I, I want you to see something here in Psalm 139. And uh, we'll jump around some, but Psalm 139. And the psalmist makes a statement here concerning uh, every person. And he says in Psalm 139 and verse 16, Your eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in your book, all my members were written which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. The Amplified Bible says, You saw my unformed substance, and in your book all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape, when as yet there was none of them. So notice he says that God has a book, and that all the days of your life have been written before there was any of them. There, there's a plan that God has. It's already written down. It's already written in His book. God has books, not just an iPad. He's got books. All right? Hallelujah. And, and, and your days... What you, his plan for your life is written there. So, the, the, the goal, the job of the believer is to be in the plan. Because it's already written down. Because that's, that's where the provision's at. And when we talk about provision, I'm not just talking about finances, although that's, that's a large part of it. That's where your peace is at. That's where your protection is at. That's where, that's where your victory is found, is in the plan. Be, because outside the plan, anything that's outside the plan is not written in the, in the book. Hallelujah. The voice translation says, Every detail of my life was already written in your book. Now, there will be people say, well, you mean all those bad things, all those bad things that happened, all that problems I had? Those problems probably happened because you got outside the plan. Because God doesn't plan problems. He plans solutions. And if problems come and I'm in the plan, I have the provision of the solution. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every detail of our lives have been written in God's book. Every detail. And so my job is then is to consistently go back to the plan. Okay, what's the plan for my life? 
Amen. The greatest thing you can do is discover God's plan for you. Because when you discover God's plan for you, you have, you have a point to, of reference to go back to. Oh, hallelujah. Let, let's look at a couple things. Uh, let's go over to Genesis 15. There's no more miserable person that you know than someone that's outside the plan of God for their life. That person's miserable. And, and the reason why is they can't walk in the blessing. They can't walk in the blessing because the blessing follows the, the plan. And, 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 and not only will they struggle, they'll, they'll fail from place to place because there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing to keep them moving. Because there's no plan. I mean, just think about that in the natural. If you don't have a plan for whatever, if you don't have a plan for your money, you're going to spend your money and not know where it went because you don't have a plan for it. Right? A plan for your money is called a budget. If, if you don't have a budget, it, it's going to go and you're not going to know where it's going. If, if you don't plan to do things, you, you can say all you want that you're going to get up in the morning and go walk. If you don't plan to do it, you're not walking, you're sleeping. Right? Because there's no plan. Amen. In Genesis 15 and verse 13, this is God speaking to Abraham when his name was still Abram, and God, and he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that your seed will be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them four hundred years. Well, I've been teaching on, on this one verse, this one chapter, for 17 weeks now in, in the book of Genesis. And this is when God made a covenant promise to Abram. So this is not just God talking. He's making a promise. And he said, they will serve them. They'll afflict them 400 years. They'll be in bondage 400 years. Let's look at Exodus 12. And uh, notice what it says here. Exodus 12, verse 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. It came to pass at the end of 430 years that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Notice in Galatians 3. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 17. And this I say that the covenant that God made with Abraham was confirmed before of God in Christ, before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after cannot disannul that it should make the promise of no effect. God said 400 years. Yet they were in bondage 430 years. Did God just decide, well, you know, 400, 430, it's about the same. It's not what he did. Right? God doesn't misspeak. He doesn't say anything he doesn't mean. He can't lie. What he says is absolute truth. Is that right? If something God said doesn't come to pass, now this is important, look at the person that it was said to and not to God. Amen. Did you see that? You know, Pastor Marie gave that, that testimony tonight, and she said it was about a year later. Well, God, God said what he meant. Right? He's, he's warning her a year beforehand, this is not my plan. Something's going to come that's going to try to shake what you believe. Right? 
Well, any time during that year, and she might have said it, I don't know, but any time during that year, she could have said, well, you know, pastor missed it. After all, he's human. He can miss it. And I can. But here's the thing. You, if God says something to you and you know it was God and it doesn't come to pass, you look at the person it was said to and not at God. Because God doesn't misspeak. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Look at Acts 7. you you got to understand, the plan of God is a mystery to most Christians you know. It's an absolute mystery. They, they are, most Christians that you know, and I hate to say it this way, but it's the truth. Most Christians you know have no more security in their life than unbelievers. Because they just go on through world with a case of rah, rah mentality. Whatever will be, will be. We'll take the good with the bad. Well, we face the good with the bad, but I don't take the bad. Because that's not God's plan for me. I, am I helping you? you? You'll see Christians, and, and we've all had issues with our children at one time or another. If you say you haven't, you're lying. Everybody has, all right? When you were a child, you were the problem at times. But, but here's, here's the issue. Here's the issue. Just because, listen, just because other people's children have all went away from God and backslid and don't want anything to do with God, that doesn't mean you just take it for yours. That doesn't mean you just sit back and go, well, you know, they all rebel. Don't you do that. That's not the plan of God for your child. That's not the plan of God for your grandchildren. That's not the plan of God for your life. Amen. Do, do you see that? See, this is what's so important about you being in the plan. It affects your kids. It affects your grandkids. If you're not in the plan of God, you won't be where you're supposed to be. So God can't speak to you the way he needs to, and he can't speak to your children. Pastor Marie was talking about her grandkids in church today. She's in church. Her grandkids are in church. They're now exposed to the gospel. Right? It's not that mom and dad aren't good and aren't doing right things. That's not what I'm saying. They're exposed to the gospel because she's in the plan of God. Oh, hallelujah. It's priceless. It's priceless to be in the plan of God. It's priceless. You can't put a number on it. Oh, hallelujah. Acts chapter 7, verse 22. This is uh, Stephen's great sermon. And he said, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. Why? For he, un he supposed his brethren would have understood how that by his hand, by his, understood how that God by his hand would deliver him. But they understood not. <laughs> so he figured out, I'll go ahead and knock this guy in the head, and everybody will understand I'm the deliverer. But they didn't understand it. Verse 28, and, and this is what the man said. Will you kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he begat two sons. And when 40 years were expired, so he's there for 40 years, Moses got ahead of God. And it cost Israel an additional 30 years of bondage. Because he got out of the plan of God. Amen. The 40 years that he spent in the wilderness was unnecessary. There are people you know, there are believers that you know, they are going through unnecessary stuff right now because they're outside the plan of God. 
There are people you know that are going through unnecessary financial issues, unnecessary marital issues, unnecessary things because they're outside the plan of God. There are people whose lives have, fall apart, have fallen apart and it's unnecessary because they're outside the plan of God. Amen. Do, do you see that? Well, you know, I just feel bad for them. I wish things would turn around. It won't till they get back in the plan. It will not till they get back in the plan. That's a good place for you to say out loud, I'm glad I'm in the plan of God. Amen. Hallelujah. How, I remember when the, when, the Lord, when the Lord started doing with Pastor Michelle and I to uh, 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 pastor two churches, one church in two locations, and to travel and to split time. You know, there were people that, that when we started doing that, they just, they just couldn't, they couldn't handle it. It was just, you know, they didn't understand it for whatever reason. And so, so they, they left the fellowship, left the church. I don't have anything against those people. But here's what, here's what I want you to understand. If it's the plan of God, what are you supposed to do? Not do it because people don't understand? It's God's plan. That's where the provision's at. Amen. If, if Abraham had not followed the plan of God, he would have never found the provision in the bush. You understand? But he had to follow the plan of God. Everything that you need is in the plan of God. When you know you're in the plan of God, your days of worry are done because I'm in the plan of God. If I'm in the plan of God, I'm not under pressure because I'm in the plan of God. It, it takes all the pressure out of it. When you know you're in the plan of God, doing the will of God, if that's what we want to say, all the pressure's gone because the, the provision is in the plan. You want to be around people that are in the plan of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. When I get ahead of the plan, I can delay God's will from coming to pass in my life. In uh, 1 Samuel 10, First Samuel chapter 10, and uh, verse 24. This is, uh, when Samuel was pointing out Saul to the people of Israel, and notice, Samuel said to all the people, see him whom the Lord has chosen. Who the Lord has chosen. What's the plan for Saul's life? To be king. That's the plan. And he said, the Lord has chosen him. Now, 1 Samuel 15 and uh, verse 11. It repents me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he's turned back from following me. And has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel and he cried unto the Lord all night. The Amplified Bible says, I regret making Saul king. For he's turned back from following me and has not performed my commands. And Samuel was grieved and angry with Saul and he cried unto the Lord all night. Now notice, God's plan was, I want you to be king. But he said, I regret making him king. Why? He turned back from following me. He's not performed my commands. He got out of the plan. He got out of the plan. See, the question then is, was Saul God's choice? Yes, he was. All my days are written in the book. It's already there. What caused God to regret making him king? He turned back from following God and didn't do what God said. Your obedience is more important than you know. Your part of the covenant is faith and obedience. 
My obedience is more important than I realize. Hallelujah. Where the plan of God is concerned. Many will say, well, you know what the Lord said to me didn't come to pass. And when you check up on it, they turn back and stop doing what God said. Hallelujah. The, the plan. In, uh, you're right there in 1 Samuel 15. Notice verse 13. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Verse 20. Saul said to Samuel, I performed the voice of the Lord and gone the way the Lord sent me and brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. <laughs> Saul was 100% outside the plan of God, yet he's saying, I did what the Lord commanded. Listen, there is no... I did most of what God said. Well, I did 60%. Right? That's like saying, well, I tithe 5%. You can't. 5% is not a tithe. You can tithe more, but you can't tithe less. Right? Like people say, well, you know, we're almost married. That's exactly like not being married. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we're kind of fooling around because we're almost married. Yeah, that's exactly the same as saying you're not. Right? So quit fooling. <laughs> Let me move on. I'm meddling now. There is no I did most of what God said. This is important. When you discover the plan, you do what the plan entails. Not most of it. All of it. Right? When a person gets out of the plan of God, they can convince themselves they're still doing what God said. When in reality, they're a long way from the plan of God. Hallelujah. I was, I was uh, telling a story this morning about a guy that met with me, and he got over into some bad doctrine that pulled him out of the plan of God. And, uh, you know, when he met with me, he was just absolutely convinced that he was doing what God wanted him to do regardless of the scriptures I took him to and showed him what you're thinking is wrong. Hallelujah. You know, his life fell apart, and his life fell apart not because he didn't do what I thought was right. He got out of the plan of God. Amen. Look in, in uh, 1 Samuel 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. And... This is when uh, the prophet was sent to Eli. And it says, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. One translation says, I really did say. Another one says, the Amplified Bible says, I did promise. Now think about that. Titus 1, 2, God is not a man. God, God, God who cannot lie. Numbers chapter 11 says, God is not a man that he should lie. So he really did say, he really did promise. So then how can he come here and say, be it far from me now? Got outside the plan. 
So God said and promised that they would be the, in, in the priesthood forever going in and out in the presence of God. He said that. He promised it. But not now. Now that doesn't mean you can't recover if you get out of the plan of God. But it means there, there are times that people say, I don't understand. This is what God said and nothing's happening or nothing's coming to pass. Check up on where you're at in the plan. Eli could have corrected this by telling his sons, we're not doing that. You're outside the plan of God. They were in the ministry outside the plan of God. There are people that I know that are in the ministry outside the plan of God. Just because someone's in the ministry doesn't mean they're in the plan of God. I've got to be in the ministry doing the plan that God called me to. Hallelujah. See, there was no denying what the will of God was. I promised this. I've, I've, I've watched people over the years that would, would, would get... Now, I'm not so much talking about disobedience as I am just showing you how important the plan is. What, what, what God has said is written. And there's a plan to cause it to come to pass. Amen. When you face challenges, go back and rely on the plan. Hallelujah. When you face circumstances, you go back and you rely on the plan. What's the plan of God for my life? I've watched financial pressure drive more people out of the ministry than anything else. They never went back and, and, and relied on the fact that they were in the plan of God. Is that the plan of God? Are you? I've talked to them on the phone. I've talked to them face to face. Are you doing what God told you to do? Are you in the plan of God? Well, yeah, but you know, it's a struggle right now. Let the provision's in the plan. If you're doing what God told you to do and you're in the plan of God, then you got to become skillful in the plan. Every year when we start uh, Faith Builders uh, uh, School, uh, School of Ministry, every year we talk to the people and, and we say, you, you need to read your verses and you need to read them over and over through the week. And then when you come and you do your, your, uh, your test and your quiz on the verses that you were supposed to read, you're going to know them. Because here's the thing. You might be able to skate by for a week or so on the knowledge that you have about the Bible. But here's the thing. You're not, you're not becoming proficient. You're not becoming skillful because there's something you didn't get. There's something you didn't get. You might get by. Amen. You might get by with using cliff notes. But there's information you're not getting. There's no shortcut with the plan. You just stay with the plan. Yeah, but the challenges are here. But you're in the plan, so you're going to overcome. Right? Yeah, but this one did this and that. But you're in the plan, so you're going to overcome. Glory to God. Amen. Do you see this? The refusal to do what God asked and to change what God asked them to change resulted in them missing the plan. Getting outside the plan of God. Notice in Isaiah 1. Hallelujah. I learned a long time ago watching people who would starve out outside the plan of God. I'm not doing that. I'm not starving for nobody. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> not anybody. Look, notice Isaiah 1.19. If you are willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. In the plan of God. 
The, the provision is in the plan. Now, I want you to see something here in Ephesians 2. The provision is in the plan. I know this is simple. And, uh, but I'm in the plan of God, so I'm not under any pressure about what you think. Or anybody thinks. That's a wonderful thing, to just not care about what anybody thinks. I, I'm, I, I got to be in the plan of God. I've had people say, well, can we do this? No. And they get upset. Now, wait a minute. I don't even get to do what I want. I don't get to just do what I want in the church. We got to do what the plan is. Do, do you understand that? Think, think about this. What do you have to rely on if you're not in the plan of God for your life? How can you go to God and say, I've done what you asked me to do outside the plan? Got quiet in this Presbyterian church. I can't. There's, there's no ground to stand on. What, when Jesus prayed in John 17, he said, Father, I have done what you asked me to do. I have given them your word, right? I'm in the plan. He could expect the help because he was in the plan of God. When he was praying in the garden, he could expect victory because he was in the plan of God. In, in 1 Corinthians, Paul could say, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, but God delivered us. Who we trust will deliver us and does deliver us because I'm in the plan of God. I'm in the plan of God. I, I, I've, I've watched people over the years. And, and they would come to me and say, well, you know, the Lord's been dealing with me to go to Bible school. Okay. So now you're either about to tell me you're going to do it or you're going to keep being disobedient. Because when you say something like, the Lord is dealing with me, you're saying you know His plan. So if I don't do what the Lord's dealing with me about, I'm willfully outside His plan. Right? When your children are doing something that they know you don't want them to do, they don't come around you and be proud of it. Do they? I mean, there's no child that's ever drew a big old A in the middle of your carpet with a crayon and called you and said, hey, look what I did. Look, it's an A. And you're like, sure enough, it's an A. Right? Even a dog knows better than that. That dog will make a, a, have an a, a accident in the house, and you can see the dog. The dog's over there going. You go, what'd you do? That's not the plan. Hallelujah. Right? I, I used to have a lady, God bless her. I, I loved her with all my heart. But she was forever telling me, God told me to do this, and God told me to do this, and God told me to do this. And if I, if I ever saw more than one thing that she saw God told her to do, that she did, I don't remember it. But now I look back, and I think, that's the problem. That's why, that's why there were so many peaks and valleys in her life. When you're in the plan of God, things smooth out. Amen. Jesus was asleep in the middle of a storm, not just because he had so much more faith than they had. He knew he was in the plan of God. When, when, when Peter, when at the end of the book of John, and you read about Peter and John, the discussion they were having, and Jesus told Peter, he said, if it's my will for John to live till I return, that's my business. You take up your cross and follow me. And then remember what he said? He said, because here's what's going to happen. He said, when you're old 
and somebody's got to help you dress yourself, and somebody's got to help lead you around, you're going to give your life for me. When you're old. Now, in the middle of the book of Acts, it says that because Herod saw that killing James pleased the people, that he apprehended Peter and put him in prison and was going to bring him out the next day and kill him. And it says that night Peter was asleep between the two guards. Well, wasn't he afraid he was going to die? Jesus said, when you're old. Right? I'm in the plan. I don't know how this is going to happen. We have no uh, understanding from the word that Peter believed an angel was going to come and open the gates and set him free. But he was in the plan of God. And where did the deliverance come from? The plan. So important. That I'm in the plan of God. When you're in the plan of God, your days of worry are done. They're finished. They're, they're, they no longer exist. When you're in the plan of God, your days of worrying about your kids are finished. Because I'm in the plan of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Never give your outside circumstances more credit than you do the plan of God. Hallelujah. That's so important. That's why Paul could say in prison, the worst prison in the Roman system, the maritime prison in Rome, he could say, I'm content. Hallelujah. I met a lot of guys in prison, a lot. And I don't know very many of them that were content. They might have learned to deal with it, but they weren't content. Paul said, I'm content. I know how to be abased and I know how to bound. I know how to do everything in Christ. That's the plan. That's the plan. If I'm in the plan, I have nothing to worry about. Amen. You know, I got to deal with numbers all the time. Numbers of the television ministry. The, the, and, and I don't mean the people that are watching. I mean the dollars that we need. Got to deal with that people, right? Because they come to me. I'm in the plan. Are we doing what God told us to do? Yeah, then, okay, I'm in the plan. I, I am not going to take the pressure that that television bill wants to put on me. I'm not going to let their pressure be my pressure. I'm in the plan of God. Right? Because the bill comes in, and it's ever how many thousands of dollars, and it's like, well, I check my pockets, I dug deeper than ever before, and it's not there. Right? Are you following me? Pressure tries to get you out of the plan. Well, I need to go do something. No, you need to stay in the plan. Because that's where the provision is. Well, I can go do this. I can go sell this. I can go do this. Why are you going to sell next month? Well, I'll get a loan. How many loans can you get? I need to be in the plan of God. Oh, hallelujah. That's so, that's so important. That is so important. Because God has that plan for us. Amen. And, and, and outside the plan, there's no fruitfulness. That's on, only in the plan of God. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, in the Amplified Bible, it says, For we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew. Now notice, here's the reason. That we may do those good works 
which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths that he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. But notice where, where this is at, being in the plan. Being in that, when, when you remember Ephesians 2.10, you never worry again. Because it's in the plan. It's in the plan. Hallelujah. And, and you don't let other people make their pressure yours. Well, what are we going to do about this, Pastor? What are we going to do about this? And we need to get this and we need to get that. It's, it's in the plan. Yeah, but you got to make a decision. No, no, I don't. Because I'm not going to take that pressure and take it as my own. It's in the plan. There are believers, you know, tonight, they're going to go home and they're not going to sleep a lick. They're not going to sleep because they're worried about their kids. They're worried about their money. They're worried about whatever. When you're in the plan of God, you lay down and you go to sleep because it's in the plan. The plan for my children is not that they die young. The plan for my children is that they live out their days on the earth. So that's, that's what I declare because I'm in the plan of God. Don't, do you remember when God was speaking to, Abram, to, to uh, 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 the angels about dealing with Sodom and Gomorrah? And he said, uh, I'm going to tell Abraham what I'm going to do because I know him. And he'll direct his children after him. Amen. Every, every time you make a decision, you're, 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 you're setting up a pattern in your life. And, and when you make decisions to worry, and you make decisions to carry care, and you make decisions, you're, you're setting a pattern of getting outside the plan. Hallelujah. Yeah, but pastor, there's plenty to worry about. Not according to Jesus. According to Jesus, there's nothing to worry about. He said, don't be anxious about even one thing. Why? Anxiousness is not in the plan. Carrying care is not in the plan. I wrote the book, Refusing the Care. Because the Lord told me, he said, when the believer carries care, they prop the door open for everything else the devil wants to bring into their life. If you don't keep in your mind that the provision is in the plan, and regardless of what you need, well, I need this many hundreds of dollars, it's in the plan. And it doesn't matter if it's a hundred or a million, it's in the plan. If you're in the plan, the provision is there. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. That, that is the key. And so when, when, you, when you remember this, that there are things planned beforehand. And notice, things that are prepared ahead of time. They're already prepared. It's not something I've got to figure out. It's already there. I just got to walk in it. And, and here's the thing. You, you can't be hit or miss with the plan. It's, is this the plan? You're always going back to, is this the plan? Is this the plan? Is this what God has asked me to do? Is this the plan of God for my life? Well, Pastor, I don't know the plan of God for my life. Well, there's your problem right there. Because, because I've got to spend time ascertaining the plan of God for my life. Amen. See, the problem with a lot of teaching that we have today in this no-fault religion, 
you know, that God's just okay with everything and, and everything in the Old Testament is done away with and, you know, it's just the words of the Apostle Paul that we go by. We don't even have to go by what Jesus said. It's just what Paul said. The problem with that is it gives people this idea that they can just do whatever they want and God's going to keep blessing them regardless of where they're at. But if you're outside the plan, the blessing doesn't have a home. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, what do you think about this? And what I, I don't. I, I got to stay focused on the plan. So God has that plan. That plan was prepared ahead of time. Before we were born, wow. Before I was born, you know, it was God's will that everybody prosper. But there are people that don't prosper because they're outside the plan. They're outside the plan. When you're, when you're in the plan, prosperity is a given. It's just a given. Amen. Hmm. Your house is in the plan. Your vehicle is in the plan. I mean, because there, there are things that God knows that you have need of. Scripture says in Matthew 6, it says that you're not to, to seek after and worry about those things that are found in the kingdom. It says your heavenly father knows you have need of all these things. Paul said in Philippians 4.19, God will supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. When you're in the plan of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So he prepared and prearranged the paths that we're supposed to take. And this, this is what I've got to remember. This is what I've got to stay focused on. Is that plan is already there. That plan is already there. When I'm walking it out and I'm staying in the plan... That, that, that is the key, is that you're keeping it within the confines of the plan. Because the enemy's always trying to get you outside the plan of God. Because outside the plan of God, you're susceptible to his tricks. Inside the plan of God, there's no chance. Oh, hallelujah. You see that? I was uh, doing some things the other day, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, uh, he said, your mother has been really thinking about your dad. She's really been missing him. And he said, you need to call her and tell her something. And he said, you need to call her and tell her if she continues in this line of thinking, she's going to get so homesick, she's going to go home. And he said, now you tell her if she wants to come home, that's fine. But watch, it would be better for her if she lived out her days on the earth. Amen. You say, well, what would you do? I called her. I said, this is what the Lord told me. See, you got a plan. I had to remind her, you got a plan for your life. Right? You got a plan for your life. And she said, you're right, I, I have been thinking a lot about that. And, and, you know, because we go places and everybody knew your dad and, and, and they just, you know. But, but here's, here's the thing. I, ha I had to remind her. I said, but you got stuff to do. You don't want to leave one day early. You want to live out your days. Because they're all written in his book. Right? And I want to make full proof of what God's asked me to do. 
I mean, heaven's great. Heaven would be nice. I remember the old song, and it's true in the days we're living in heaven, sounding sweeter all the time. Right? Amen. But, listen, but, if I have a plan, if God has a plan for me, I want to fulfill it. So she said she just went to the Lord and said, Lord, I'm just going to stay here and I'm just going to live out my days. The plan, the plan that, 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 that God has for you. And notice, it was prepared ahead of time. So... It's kind of foolproof. It requires diligence, right? Pastor Marie was taking the offering. She said some things that we shouldn't ever say. Ron, Pastor Ron said some things today too. Listen, you should never say things like, I don't know what to do. The Lord told me almost 20 years ago to never say these three things again. I don't know, I can't, and I don't understand. I don't say that. When someone says, what do we do here? I don't go, I don't know. I'll find out. We'll figure it out. God will help us. Now, here's why I'm saying that. When you say, I don't know, what do you do with that? Well, Pastor, it's true. I don't know. But listen, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wrap this up, but I need you to see this. The only way the Holy Spirit can take hold with you about something is if you're in the plan of God. No, notice over here in Romans 8. I'll show you this. Verse 26. Familiar scripture, but notice. The Spirit also helps our infirmities or our weaknesses for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God, the plan of God. So in the instance I was talking about earlier, if you're dealing with a financial situation, and it doesn't seem like there's enough provision, right? Especially if something that you need, something in the ministry, something for your family. And you go to the Lord and you say, now, Lord, there's provision in the plan. I just need to know how to get it. Right? And then you pray in the Spirit. Well, why? Be <laughs> He's got to take hold with you. And he's not going to pick something up that you're not picking up. Right? He's not just going to pray in tongues for you. I got to pick it up. I'll go to the Lord with those things and say, now, Lord, this is what I'm praying about. Holy Spirit, this is what I'm praying about. You mean you're telling God what you're praying about? Yeah. You mean you don't? You got to go to God and say, this is what I'm praying about. Holy Spirit, this is what I'm praying about. And you got to learn to quiet your mind. Yeah, but my mind just runs away with me. You're not skilled at shutting it up. You got to quiet your mind. Amen. Do, do you see that? You quiet your mind, and then you can pray and and. The Lord showed me something one time. I saw a vision, and, and, and uh, I had been preaching about 10 minutes. And somebody got up and walked out of the church and, and was leaving. And I said in this vision, I said, what you hear in 10 minutes' time can change your life. And then I woke up, and the Lord started talking to me about some of these things. You can pray things out in 10 minutes in the Holy Ghost, when you quiet your mind, and it's just like a bubble will just come up with the answer. Hallelujah. I don't have 40 years to just kind of dawdle along and hope I get everything done. 
None of us do. Hallelujah. Do, do you see what I'm saying? I got to spend less time in this arena and more time in the spirit. Because that's where the answers are. Glory to God. Amen. But, but I got to learn to quiet my mind. I, uh, I got a, uh, there was a certain individual one time that, <sighs> Lord, help me say this right. They, uh, I knew there were things going on, but I didn't know what was going on. And uh, uh, they text me one time. They were, they were in leadership, and they text me one time. And they said, look, I'm not going to be in church tomorrow. Um, I'm not feeling well. And uh, when somebody sends me a text and says things like that, you know, I don't, I don't just answer right away. I don't answer right away with, oh, I'm sorry. I hope you feel better. You know, because, of course, if they're really sick, I want them to feel better. <laughs> but I want to know. See what I'm saying? And so I prayed about it in the Holy Ghost. Because he'd sent a, uh, this person sent a, a, a dual text to my wife and myself. And I just took five minutes, maybe five minutes, and prayed in the Holy Ghost. And the Lord said, there's a woman involved. And he's fooling around. That's what the Lord told me. And so I just texted him back and said, okay. And then the next morning I told my wife, I said, you mark my words. There's a woman involved here. Now, there's nothing wrong with women. There's nothing wrong with women. All right, but in this situation, there's something drastically wrong. Jamie, Jamie looked at me like, yeah, that's right, amen, praise the Lord. <laughs> Jamie's like, it depends on what woman, amen, <laughs> hallelujah, amen. Well, now, now, now listen, it's, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit's not telling off on somebody. This person's getting outside the plan of God for their life. There's danger, Will Robinson. Outside the plan of God. Right? And here's the problem. If someone wants to stay outside the plan of God, you can't help them. You can pray for them, but you can't help them. Hallelujah. And it's no wonder things started taking a nosedive. Because you can't get outside the plan of God. We got to be so careful in the day and age where, and when I say careful, you understand what I mean. Not full of care. We got to be cautious about what we're doing. Every decision you make is affecting your future. It's affecting your family. It's affecting your walk with God. You, you got to be so cautious. I, I'm telling you, Lord, help me say this right. I got to quit. But folks, you got to be more honest today than you've ever been before. I, I hate lying more than I've ever hated it before because it destroys people's lives. Amen. Amen. When somebody asks you something, you got two choices. Tell the truth or say nothing. And saying nothing doesn't always work. Hmm. Now you say, Pastor, what's that got to do with the plan of God? What you do in those arenas is going to determine what you got to get through first before you can get your answer. I, I was dealing with a, a, a minister one time, and I could not figure out, I could not figure out why there wasn't a breakthrough. Why there, and, and I don't know if the Lord hid it from me. Some, sometimes you just love people so much, and you just want to think good about them, that, that right, you, you don't get over there in the spirit like you should. You remember the story Brother Hagin told? He said one time he, was, uh, he kept getting this sense that somebody was going to get thrown from a car. And this was like the late 60s. You know, I'm old enough to remember we didn't have seat belts. Some of y'all are young like me, and you remember that too. <laughs> didn't need a seat belt. We had the long arm of mama. <laughs> seat belt. Please. 
You see, we stood up in the front seat of the car. Mama had to hit the brakes. She knocked the air out of us. Poof. Hallelujah. I mean, we couldn't breathe for a little while, but we were alive. Who cares if you got a bruised sternum? You're, you're alive. <laughs> you know, and if Dad hit the brakes and you slammed into the back seat, it was your fault anyway. I, wasn't him. Hallelujah. But he kept getting that sense. And so they'd get in the car and he'd tell his wife, put your seatbelt on. Well, she thought that was odd. And then, and then you remember he said, I never really took the time to really just, pr I prayed about it a little bit, but I was so busy. I had things going on. I only had a couple days in, at home. And, and his niece was in an automobile accident, was thrown from the car and got killed. And the Lord spoke to him and said, you did not spend time getting over into, into the mind of the Spirit. If you had, we could have avoided this. Plan of God, and I'm getting in the Spirit. Quiet in my mind, and get in the mind of the Spirit. Amen. Do, do you see this? This is so important. Because where the, where the plan of God is, the provision goes. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, you take the time to pray in the Spirit. And, and when something comes up that is contrary to the plan or something you're dealing with, but it's in the plan, then i got to spend time for praying about the answer in the Spirit. Because the an if, if, if you have a financial bottleneck, the answer is not necessarily more money. There's a crimp somewhere. Right? Remember Brother Copeland talking about being uh, $6 million behind in the television bill? And he got all the reports of every department. He's going into his, his yearly uh, uh, board meeting, and he said, I got all of these department reports, and every department is doing better than it's ever did. And he said, and then I got to the television ministry, and it's like this big red hole, $6 million behind. And the Lord told him two things. Number one, every department that you have given me and cast the care over onto me about is doing great. The only one that you're carrying the care of is the television. And then he said, the second thing is you need to start tithing off of everything that comes in this ministry. I mean, they were tithing, but not off everything that came in the ministry. Well, they did, and in a matter of months, $6 million was gone. Well, what if he would have not took the time to get over in the Spirit? Where, where was the finances? In the plan. Right? It was in the plan. And, and, and that's got to be my focus, is the plan of God. Because once I, I know the plan of God, when I remember Ephesians 2.10... My days of worry are done. Because this is, it's, it's, notice, I'll end with this. Notice, the, he predestined and planned beforehand. He prepared ahead of time. He prearranged and made ready. Amen. You know, if you have need of a home, it's in the plan. If you have need of a vehicle, it's in the plan. It's not just about things, it's the plan. Oh, hallelujah. The plane is in the plan. The buildings are in the plan. But when you start taking the pressure, and you start allowing people to make their pressure yours, they're under that pressure, not me. Oh, hallelujah. Do you see that? Say it out loud. I'm so glad, I'm so glad. Every, detail every detail of my life, of my life is already written, already written in your book. In your book. Father, I'm so, I'm so glad that the pathway for my life, for my life has, been has been prearranged 
predestined. predestined. Prepared ahead of time. Ahead of time. And all I got to do is walk it out. In your plan. In, your plan. in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now raise your hands and thank the Lord for that. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Of course, don't forget, of course, Wednesday night we'll be uh, all together here via... uh, video, and uh, then Sunday morning, uh, I'll be back. We start six days of faith. Uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, we're going to have those uh, all six, well, I'll say all six days on the dimension of faith, and uh, uh, the Lord's helping us see some things about faith that I believe are going to help us, and uh, so God's good to us. Amen. Let's stand up tonight, shall we? Thank you for your, your spirit. Thank you for bringing your supply. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Don't forget our picnic coming up. The burning question about our picnic is what will Buzz bring? (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) And I know what he's saying right now. My appetite. (laughs) Hallelujah. So, amen. Glory to God. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Isn't God good? Amen. You're such a good church, good group, good, strong church. Hallelujah. Uh, Pray for all those that are out of town, that are on trips, vacation, other things. And we're believing God for good things. Amen. Come on, say it with us tonight, would you? The vision of our church will always be to build people's faith and frame their world by the Word of God. You and I will always be world changers. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for this message. We would love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request or want to share how this message has helped you, send us an email at main at buildfaith.net. This message and many more materials are available to you free of charge, can be found at buildfaith.net or at any of our location media stores. As always, keep the switch of faith turned on and build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God.